So, welcome to the Hendy Performance 500 Focus RS. This was a real treat today, I wasn't expecting this, but I was handed the keys as a loan car while my standard RS is in for service. And I was asked, would I like to take the 500? And the answer was yes. So here we are. What do I think of the RS 500? Well, I have to say, fantastically impressed so far. Um, I can't see many of the downsides. It drives, it's got uh, lowered springs on it, high back springs, and they lower the ride height. And you really can notice the difference. Um, I think it benefits the car in every way. And as yet, I'm not aware of any penalty in ride comfort either, so that seems like a real win-win on this car. I'm surprised actually how much it benefits the car. The Focus RS is a little bit tall as standard, perhaps, I, should, I think you could say that in general about the Mark III Focus. Uh, it can feel a little bit tall and a little bit tippy, possibly. This really negates that and it makes the car feel much feel like it's got a lower centre of gravity, it feels lower and I just think it improves the car in uh, all respects really, so I'm surprised by that. And I, I thought there would be a price to pay in terms of ride comfort, I thought it would be even firmer which I didn't want, which I wouldn't want, um, but it feels very similar in terms of the way it handles bumps. So here we are, look at, the, look at where we've come from that Mark III Focus diesel to this 500 horsepower Ferrari basher, Ferrari beta. So now would be a good time to tell you about the two things that this car is particularly good at. The first, conveniently, is going slowly. This is really, really happy to potter around off boost drive like a Focus 2.3 NA which is important and I think they've done a great job of making the car feel happy doing this. The other thing it's really good at is full afterburners, pants on fire, maximum attack. It's fantastic at that. Once you've got past the initial surge of boost, the car pulls in a really linear way, actually, um, more so than the standard car. My stock RS has a sort of second wind at 6,000 RPM. This just pulls clean and hard all the way up to the limiter. It's very impressive. It's a great engine, actually. It does sound quite a bit better than standard. Um, there's a lot more induction. You can hear this real suction noise as it gobbles up the air when you do a larger throttle opening. You can really hear that. You can't hear much in the way of turbo spooling up in terms of the turbo whistle. Don't get much of that at all. So um, the second thing it's good at is going like the clappers. So here we have second gear. Not so sure about this surface. That's mostly wheel spin. That was mostly wheel spin. But again, with the Quaife diff perhaps helping there, the car copes surprisingly well. It doesn't seem to back off the power too much, actually. Um, I'll try sport mode. But this is a really slippery surface, and I'm getting all four wheels spinning, but I'm not getting much movement side to side with the car, which is great. The standard car is a bit camber sensitive, and you'd think by jacking up the power like this, you would intensify that and make it a lot worse. It really isn't a lot worse, which is great. So it handles the power surprisingly well, and I think it's testament to how over the standard car is. It certainly feels that way. So it feels like they've just unlocked more potential in the car. I'm amazed how well it handles, given 
it's stock apart from the lower springs. Uh, so yes, you get this great suction sound as the car takes a lungful of air before absolutely spanking you forward in a very uh, exciting way. So there's a real binary switch over point between on and off boost. Now that is anything but linear. It's proper old school laggy boost, which does make it huge fun. I think this particular road is very slippery. Um, still, let's. Uh, <laughs> that really sounded like something exploded then. Now, to, to really evaluate. What, this, what they've achieved with this car, I do need to drive my standard car again because I think when you get back into a standard car you notice some of the things that I'm now starting to get used to about this car. Um, it's going to feel slow, or that's probably the wrong word, it's going to feel a bit more sensible <laughs> and that's something a Focus RS doesn't usually feel very sensible. Spin City. Whoa! So slippery. Yeah, that's wheel spin in fourth on this road. Weirdly, I was coming up here earlier and it wasn't actually as slippery as this. It wasn't as bad as this. And it's almost become, the road's almost become greasier. do have that incredible surge. It makes it a bit... Oh, so much wheel spin! But you know you couldn't, short of changing the tyres, you couldn't get any more traction. So these are quite heavy cars as well. So this is a super slippery stretch of road for whatever reason. So yes, yeah, the thing that it's not so good at is, is driving sort of fast road pace, fast but safe road pace at kind of 60%. Because, it, because of that on-off difference between boost, I mean, driving fairly fast. Sort of either really wants to go like the clappers or chill out. It doesn't have really have a middle setting. But it's a very fast and exciting car, and I love the way the engine just feels like it will do this for days. I love how strong the engine feels, which is great. For all of those who view cynics about the 2.3 litre. All of those hardcore RS fans who only love the five cylinder, this sounds and goes brilliantly. So for me, I wouldn't swap this for the old five. So we have a lot of mount tune parts on this car. We've got the bigger intercooler, we've got cams, we've got intake kit, we've got forged rods, pistons. Um, we've got more boosts, we've got quite a lot more boost. <laughs> Takes it to over two. <laughs> now, out of interest, I've set the average MPG just for fun. See how that compares to the stock car. 
Driven gently, you can get over 30 miles per gallon out of the stop on Focus RS. This one, we are having 21 is what I've averaged, but so off boost. It claims we're doing 35 mpg right now, 2,000 rpm, fifth gear. So it claims. So anyway, yeah, I think this is a fab car. It's brilliant fun. It's so quick. You would never tire of giving fast exotics the surprise of their life in one of these. And you can keep up with anything. Uh, probably great fun on a circuit as well. Although I do think the on-off nature of the performance, the boosty na nature, may cause issues mid-corner, I don't know. But again, with this four-wheel drive system, and the quaff diff, you probably probably deal with that better than you might think. So, brilliant job, handy performance, hours of fun. Like I said, I I think if I had one, I would leave it as stock as possible on the outside, and you'd have such a sleeper of a car. I think that would be more fun than this particular in-your-face livery. The full nutter Asbo exhaust is hilarious. overtake anyone without explosive backfires uh, freaking them out and throwing horses and all that stuff so I think I might give the loud exhaust a mist but I can see why on the demo car you'd have it because of course you would wouldn't you all the bells and whistles so yeah fabulous uh, great fun fantastic engine what a beast it was an absolute beastie I'd love to try it in the drive to be honest um, to be putting that sort of power straight down to the road would feel great, and I'm sure the car can. It's just in the wet, it's asking a bit much of its Michelin Pilot Sports. It just <laughs> does not let up. Like I say no dips, no plateaus. Fantastic power curve, but it's this on-off nature. You've got nothing, 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 something, everything. <laughs> God, what a silly car! Yeah, that felt, uh, that last bit down that straight where we've got a better road surface. It wasn't putting all the power down before on the slippery B roads, but get it on a better surface. Woo! It just does not let up. That is very quick and I have to say, uh, I've driven many road cars quick. I haven't driven many road cars quicker than that. Um, very impressive. I don't think that would ever get old. Amazing, really. I think it's a Ford Focus. It's just a Ford, a Ford Focus that can do that. That is astonishing. I mean, this feels like modded GTR level of shelf. It's really intense. But also, it does feel well done. It does feel like someone has spent a lot of time on mapping. There's going to be a sudden... When you get that sudden spike of torque, it's going to make it a bit interesting, I think, mid-corner. I'd quite like to see what that does on a greasy roundabout. But where I'm going to find a quiet enough roundabout, I don't know. Yeah, the car felt so quick just on that straight back there. It was like the fastest I have felt it 
pulled so hard, and I just think it's because the roads are drying a bit, well, drier than they were. So if I try and get to some better surfaced roads, where this thing can actually have more of a chance to give you all the power and torque it's got, I think I might be in for a bit of a shock, because I think it's sort of, there's another level of performance again that I hadn't experienced before because it was just so wet. I generally take the view that stock is better, but then you get into a really well-engineered modified car like this and you realise actually that the manufacturer's settings are intentionally conservative. They, you know, they want the cars to run for over 100,000 miles without a rebuild, etc. You have to leave a lot of potential untapped in order to deliver on everyday high mileage reliability. So you realise that there's a lot of room to play with actually and there's a lot of potential in a car like this and to get in one of these and unlock that potential you just think what an incredible piece of engineering the Focus RS is. So I think there's a lot to be said for a mass produced car like this which is turned up. Providing the people doing it know what they're doing and it's not done on the cheap, it's done with the best quality parts. There's a lot to be said for it. See, there's a good example. As much as I love the Asbo exhaust, I'm driving really slowly and I'm trying to overtake a car without being offensive or obnoxious. And the car's just crackling and exploding. Um, so, as you might expect from a half yellow, half blue car, you can't avoid being obnoxious in this. Just, it's just the way it is. I guess you have to embrace it. good amount of lag but I think that's part of what makes something like this fun. It's a proper old-school boost fest but the beauty of it is this has a four-wheel drive chassis that can cope with it. As a combination it's fantastic because of course it's just as good at driving slowly as a standard car but it offers a whole new world of performance when you want and when you have room to extend it a bit. So, straight back in the stocker. It's a lot quieter. It's all feeling smoother and more refined just because it don't have that crazy exhaust. But we are sitting an inch higher here. But actually, it's feeling that a bit more civilised. It's definitely quiet. It doesn't have that drone, which, as fun as it is, I think for a daily driver proposition, there's a lot to be said for this. And of course, this uh, exhaust will do pops and bangs theatrics as well. Primarily in sport mode, not in, in a normal mode. 
So yeah, well, it's nice to be back in such a minty example, and I have to say, I've come away weirdly feeling quite delighted to have one because having seen the potential of the car, I know that that's there as an option further down the line if I want it, and I can see that in many ways how I sort of feel now is this has got all the performance potential I could ever want from a daily driver. And I've got it right here and maybe I don't need to think about other cars um, maybe I can just think about updating this and keeping it so yeah I've come away thinking they're pretty fantastic and that I'm fortunate to have one and that this is something of a minter Here's the bit I'm not looking forward to, putting my foot down and feeling a 155 horsepower de deficit, I'm particularly looking forward to that, but sixth gear definitely have more response and that is really noticeable. So this is in a high gear, very low RPM, so you really can notice the, la the lack of lag. So the standard car does have its benefits. Fourth gear, here we go. <laughs> Definitely not a strong. <laughs> well, what do? What could you expect? Definitely not a strong initial pickup. It's much smoother between on, on and off boosts. 